Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. So, you've made it through your first lab in your new career as a physicist. Congratulations. And what we're going to do today is we are going to take what we have learned in our first lab and we are going to apply it to kind of start to break down what exactly these graphs tell us. Because what we're going to find out is that in physics, the easiest way to figure out anything about a moving object is to simply graph its motion. All right. Now, we need to remind ourselves of a couple of things. We are starting in the very basic of all motion. And that is something moving in a straight line, hopefully moving at a constant speed or constant velocity, as we're going to start calling it. All right. Now, over the next couple of days, we're going to define what some of these words mean, because what we're going to find out is that of all the sciences that we talk about in the public school system, physics is the one where the language of physics and common everyday language gets mixed up a lot. So we're going to hear a lot of words like velocity or speed or force or momentum. And we're going to find out that they don't always mean exactly what we expect them to mean that we, in the way that we use them. Sometimes they do. All right. But that's what we're going to explore kind of this entire year. So for this first worksheet, this is our first kind of step into experimenting with the idea of motion. All right. We're going to take a graph that has been created. This is a position versus time graph. And we're going to use it to kind of create a couple other things. All right. Now, we'll remember that from our lab, the position versus time graph, all it literally does is it says we are just measuring where this object is. It could be a cart moving either forward or backward. It could really be anything we want to talk about. Where it is at a certain point in time. All right. Now, if we look at the graph that we have on this worksheet, you'll notice that it kind of almost can be divided into three things. And in fact, a lot of times what I want you to do is when you have a position versus time graph, the first thing you can do is kind of look at it and try and figure out what sections seem to be kind of a specific type of motion. All right. In this particular case, looking at this graph, it looks like I can almost divide it into three sections of motion. So in fact, that's what, what I'm going to do. I'm just going to kind of divide these up and we're going to say this is section one, this very narrow section right here, which is really beautifully done dotting on my part. I'm going to say section two. And this little part here is going to be section three. All right. Now, this is going to be very useful to us because when we actually define this or describe it in words, it's going to be a lot easier to just basically say section one, this happened, section two, this happened, and section three, this happened, than trying to write a very eloquent essay describing the motion. This is not English class, uh, so we're not writing essays. So don't worry. All right. So with that being said, I'm going to find that it's actually easier to usually describe a graph in words first. And then we're going to draw what this thing called a motion map that we haven't really talked about yet. All right. But as we kind of go through it, you'll see it's not, it makes a ton of sense once you kind of look at it. All right. So we're going to describe the motion of the object in words. And we're going to start by just drawing one, two, three. Okay. Now in section one, Whenever we describe the motion of an object in physics, we want to include a couple things. All right. We want to describe the type of motion. Now, in our lab, our goal was to specifically prove if the little buggies that we have were moving at a constant velocity. All right. And we did that, if you remember from our lab, by basically measuring at each second where the object was and then graphing it. All right. And if it was at a constant velocity, the graph made some sort of diagonal line. Now, in this case, if we look at it and we look at section one, we see a nice diagonal line, which tells us right here, based off of what we saw from our lab, that the object is moving at a constant velocity here. All right. Now, that's the first thing we're going to write down. We're going to describe the motion. We're going to say, starting at time zero, and I do apologize. I'm gonna hand, I'm gonna freehand this with a mouse, so this is really gonna look pretty ugly. All right. So basically, describe the motion object in words, starting at t zero. The object moves with a constant velocity. And now the other piece that I want you to include is I want you to tell me if it's moving in the positive direction or the negative direction. All right. Now, this is going to be very important because we're going to find out that in this class, 
Positive and negative do not mean the same thing that they, they mean in math class. In this class, if I'm talking about something moving in a positive direction, that generally just means it could be moving forward or whatever we define as the positive direction. And vice versa, when we talk about the negative direction, that doesn't mean that the position's getting smaller. It just means it's moving away from what we define as the positive position. So usually in our case, we say that going forward is positive, going backwards is negative, all right? So just describe the motion of this object in words. For number one, we basically just say that starting at position zero, and that's the other thing you, you wanna explicitly say where it starts. We'll say starting at position of zero meters, this object moves with a constant velocity in the positive direction. Now that's the basic right there. So starting in position, and actually you just X represents position, so X equals zero meters. Object moves with a constant velocity in the positive direction. You can also include some things like maybe saying how long it moves in that. So if you want to, you can say starting in position X at position zero meters, the object moves with a constant velocity in the positive direction for two seconds. You could also say, if you want, how fast this thing is moving. We talked about it in the end of the lab when we analyzed our data. The slope of this line represents how fast something is moving. Because moving. what it's measuring is it's measuring the slope is saying, I go two meters every second, which is a fancy way of just saying how fast I'm moving. All right? So you can include all those if you want. It's really up to you. So right there, starting position x equals zero meters. The object moves with constant velocity in the positive direction. And I do apologize. I'm going to shorthand a couple things. So I'm going to say CV for constant velocity in positive direction. That's definitely not a T. Of course, it's definitely going to be super confusing looking at me writing this. Okay. So section one, good to go. Section two, if we look at the graph, you'll notice in this case, this is a very specific thing that's happening here. If we look at section two, the graph position-wise isn't changing. So even though the time is moving, we're going from two to three seconds, the position hasn't changed at all, which tells us that if you ever see a position versus time graph and the position does not change, if there's a horizontal line, the object is now stopped. All right, and we're gonna call it at rest. That's the physics way of saying stop. So in this case, for section two, we can just basically say object is at rest. And if you want, you can specify where it is. So object is at rest at four meters. But right there, horizontal line and a position versus time graph, it just means that nothing's moving. So it's at rest. Now for part three, when we jump to this last section, now, once again, the object is moving and it's moving at a constant velocity because as we can clearly see, we have a nice diagonal line, just like we saw in the lab. The only difference is that now, because the line is moving negatively, the position is basically that the position is going towards zero. This object is now moving with a constant velocity in the negative direction. All right, so what we can say for section three, is we can say object moves with a constant velocity in the negative direction and stops back at the origin. So object moves with constant velocity in the negative direction. So I guess I'm going out of order in negative direction with constant velocity. Okay. And stops at the origin. And remember, the origin is just going to be the starting position. It's not necessarily always going to be like it is on a graph. And, well, when I say the word origin, it usually just means we get back to the starting point. All right? In a direction with constant velocity. All right? So, right there, it does seem like, you know, it, takes, it took a lot longer to kind of define it. But remember, this is the first time we broke down a graph like this. And you're not going to have to handwrite it using a mouse, so it'll be a lot faster. All right, but we're just looking at this idea, ladies and gentlemen, that whenever we have a position versus time graph, our first inclination is going to be, I am going to just split it up into the different sections that seem like they're kind of the same and define each section, all right? 
Now for the motion map. A motion map is something that most of you probably have never heard of, which is totally fine because it's something that is very useful when you have an object that's moving forward or backward. All right. All a motion map is, is kind of the equivalent of, imagine that our car was leaking oil. And every second, it dropped a little droplet of oil that landed where it was. All right? The motion map is basically that. So what a motion map is, is that basically you start with what appears to be a number line. But it's not really a number line. Instead, it's basically like a piece of measuring tape. And what you do is that every second that goes by, you put a dot where the object is according to this graph, all right? So the very first dot is for t equals zero. And according to this graph at t equals zero, the object is at a position of zero meters, all right? Now, what we're gonna do is that next to each dot, I want you to write the time. So in this case, it's t equals zero, all right? Now, we go one second further. So now we've gone forward in time. We are now, according to this graph, at two meters. So what we do is we take our car and we move it to two meters on the measuring tape and we put a dot there. All right, and we put T equals one second now. Okay, now, while this is a good start, one other thing we can do to make it very clear which way something is moving, because we're going to find out that one of the most important features of describing things in physics is talking about where something is going, the direction. So what we can do here is literally draw an arrow between the two dots. All right. Now, we're going to find out that the length of that arrow actually met, represents something. And some of you, if you think about it, you might be able to kind of connect the dots here, no pun intended and kind of figure out what the length of that arrow, or as we're gonna start calling it a vector, throwing too many fun things at you today. But for now, we're just drawing some dots, okay? So, one second, now we move to two seconds, and we look at the graph. And wouldn't you know it, at two seconds, the graph is now, the object is now at four meters. So, we put another dot right here. And we put t equals two seconds, so that we know what time we're at. And then we draw an arrow. Awesome. So what we've done now is we've drawn the motion map for the first part of this graph, all right? Now, at three seconds, we have a bit of an issue, or at least it might be an issue depending on what we're gonna do, because you'll notice at three seconds, even though a second has gone by, we haven't changed our position at all, all right? So in theory, what that would mean is that in reality, our car had stopped at four meters, so if our oil was still leaking, it would drop at the same spot. But in order to make sure that we don't get confused, in order to show when something is not moving on a motion map, what we do is we just draw a dot either above or below, doesn't really matter, the dot that came before it. So in this case, for t equals three seconds, I'm still at four meters, so I just put the dot above it. All right? And now two sections are done. Now for the last piece, the very last section, we're going to once again look at our graph. And we're going to go second by second. Now, you'll notice if you look at section one and section three, the number, the velocity is different. This one's actually, the car's actually moving faster in section one because it's going two meters for every second. Whereas for section three, it's only going one meter every second. All right. So just kind of going through it, T equals four seconds. This is now looking at the graph, three meters. We put a dot here. Once again, five seconds. Now we're at two meters. Six seconds. One meter. Seven seconds. When the graph ends, we're back to where we start. All right. And just like we talked about earlier, we're going to draw little arrows between them. Um, in case you're curious, probably the best way to do it is just have them connect. So have them touching the dot. You can see I'm doing a really great job as I'm freehanding trying to draw this. Okay. And then, of course, we label the times so that we know at what time we're at what little dot position. So, five, and I do apologize. I'm just going to write six. Oh, oops. My apologies. I messed this up. You're getting the, real, you're getting the full experience of being in my class because at some point I am going to mess something up every day. Uh, and I generally don't learn it, realize it until I'm well into the video. So, four seconds. Five seconds, that's really good, S, 
six seconds, and the end seven seconds. All right? So what we're seeing right here, ladies and gentlemen, is just the idea. It's our first real practice with going through and breaking down a position versus time graph. All right? And honestly, all we have to do is just break it down section by section and just kind of use it to kind of first write down what's happening and then use this little motion map that literally is just like a little radar ping. And every second when the radar pings, we put a dot where we are on the measuring tape. All right? 